Hello and welcome to episode 11 of Sutton United Talk Time on podcast. I'd like to thank my good friend Damien Gale for the wonderful intro music you've just heard. He performed on the show, or sorry, he featured on the show as Parallel X. He's also known as Nine Lives and he's also in Stone Circle from a few years ago. Thank you very much, Damien. It was really appreciated. This week I'm chatting to club legend Craig Dundust. Um, chatting, coughing, spluttering, so I do hope you bear with me. My voice is rather shaky this week. It's not good at the best of times. Firstly, however, we have some music from The Survival Code, and this is Crawl. You can find out more about them on thesurvivalcode.co.uk, or as usual, there'll be a blog post that accompany the podcast. That was Crawl from the Survival Code. Now, last week, after I posted on the fans forum that the podcast was ready for people to listen to, I logged in a few days later to notice there was a few different comments on there, wondering obviously what conversation I sparked off, excitedly tried to read the comments, to find that they were talking about the various different pubs in the area. So, as punishment, or giving the audience what they want, depending on which you want to believe, this is a new feature which may last for a while, or this may be the very only time you ever hear it. Please enjoy Pub of the Week. Pub 
The Sutton United Clubhouse. Very best of luck to everyone to get that tune out of their head now. If you'd like to nominate a pub of the week, if you're even remotely interested, drop me a line at any of my normal socials. Please don't abuse me. I know how annoying it is. That's what made me laugh and made me do it. Now, I'm delighted to welcome my guest this week. It is the main man, uh, Mr. 500, one of only eight players, I believe, who have played 500 games for the club in 120 years. Legend. I don't know really what to call you. Dundo? Dundas? Legend? I don't I don't know. <laughs> How are you, Craig? Dundo with you. I'm good, thanks. <laughs> yeah, excellent. So there's not going to be many people listening to this who, who don't know you, but just in case we've got a fan who literally has only tuned in A today and never heard of Sutton before, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your, your Sutton history, um, in essence, who are you? Yeah, I'm Craig Dundas. Well, I've been at Sutton forever now, or well, about 11 years. I've been at a few non-league clubs, but yeah, I've never been kind of a pro. This was mainly been at non-league clubs. So yeah, that's, that's me. That's you. You're very <laughs> modest. <laughs> very, very <laughs> modest. As you say, it was um, about sort of 11 or so years ago, um, and that was in just in the, the pre-Doswell era when... Um, yeah things weren't going so great for us but the fans warmed to you almost straight away if, if you remember back that far yeah mainly because I probably scored on my debut when we was like 3-0 down I think that kind of helped absolutely um, <laughs> but yeah being 3-0 down wondering who I signed for and so forth through my mind but yeah 11 years later I'm still here so it could have yes. been that bad no absolutely and you say still here you did have a little uh, an affair with um, Hampton and Richmond, wasn't it, for yeah. a season? And then you, you, you obviously came back to your true love. Yeah. Uh, they were playing at slightly higher level than us at the time, weren't they? They were Conference South, were they? Yeah, they were Conference South at the time. I think something was the Ram and yeah. Premier. Yeah, so I just went there for, for a year, basically. I had quite a good year there. And then, yeah, those all wanted me to come back. So I didn't have no second thoughts. So come, come straight back. Well, you mentioned that the comeback. And obviously, we've had quite a few comebacks. <laughs> especially recently. What is it about him and, and the club that make people want to come back? Well, I think it's a good change room part of it. It's a good atmosphere to be in. Um, and everyone's kind of on the same level. There's no one who thinks they're bigger than anyone else. Um, so yeah, it's got a good team spirit and everyone can kind of chip in. Everyone has their spot. Um, that's the change room and team-wise. And obviously the club's run really well from bottom to top. Talking about from volunteers up to the chairman. So... So that's a good, it's a good place to be. I think that's why everyone likes likes being there. Yeah, no, it, absolutely. I mean, obviously, from my, my very biased point of view, you don't see much of other clubs because I don't really pay that much attention. Um, but it just seems um, really nice that people like coming back. I spoke to Frakey um, t- towards last the end of last season, and he was yeah. saying it's historically a lot of players do come back, and when they come back, or even if on opposition teams, they're very very welcomed in some. There's not been many where people have not been welcomed back with good support. <laughs> And on the support, you've got two of the the, the, the big chants. Um, obviously, the dundo, 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 and then the slightly more sinister, dundo's going to get you. Yeah. How did, you, how did you feel the first time you were hearing them? I was just happy to have a song the first first time hearing it. Um, and I, I do think it does help with the intimidation to the opposition. Um, but yeah. <laughs> I was quite happy to to uh, to hear those kind of chops, which everyone everyone every player would like to have a song. Yeah, well, I'm gonna tell us about him. yeah, it's it's something that doesn't happen so much now. I, I'm going to sound really old and everything, but we've all obviously um, people on YouTube and Twitter doing their different fan chants. So it seems to be a lot of people just slotting in different clubs, different names, but basically the same chant. So it's nice to have a few um, sort of unique ones. I think Kevin and Mankles had had a good one. Where what's that coming over the hill? Yeah. That was a nice one as well. But um, it, it does seem a lot is just kind of we will just change the name on that. Yeah. So apart from obviously you've now had 500 games. Um, Apart from making that that appearance, which I don't think you were expecting at the time, um, no. <laughs> any favourite memories of the of the many many years? Is there anything that stands out for you? Well, there's loads, <laughs> uh, but it's got to be winning the league, winning the Ram and Prem, winning the Conference South kind of stand, and really up there, and obviously the Arsenal game being in and around that. So that was kind of like the the main kind of big kind of memories. The, the whole cup run, even, um, even though you must be gutted not to be featuring on the on the Arsenal game, because you're a massive Arsenal fan, aren't you? Yeah, yeah it was not yeah. too bad. I might not play it anyway, so it was good that I was cup first. 
Um, but <laughs> it just must have been so bizarre, especially as you, you say you, you were here with us in the times when things were bad and there was like two, three hundred people wandering and rattling around the ground and then suddenly it's just completely rocking with the BBC there live. just must have been surreal for you watching it and looking at it. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like a reward <laughs> basically for like all the hard work throughout the years, playing... Um, going through all the going to the backgrounds, obviously being relegated and stuff like that to have that have that moment. So yeah, it's kind of to see it as a reward of being being oh, basically to the club. And did you get a chance to um, chat to uh, the winger or any of the players? Um, yeah, a couple words with winger. I had a picture with winger, uh, Shaka, Mer Saka. Um, but yeah, a few of them just kind of left kind of early. Obviously, Walcott was walking about hanging about a little bit so yeah I did get to uh, see a few and speak to a few of them on to um, obviously 500 um, it, was, it wasn't it was that long ago you kind of you you were reborn I think there was one season came back from pre-season uh, after pre-season and looked at you and I genuinely thought you'd been dabbling in the occult because it was you'd suddenly just were looking trim fit fast and it was like that's that's <laughs> not the same player um <laughs> What happened there? Was it just you? You 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 suddenly realised you you you're coming toward. I mean, that was a few years ago now, but you realised you're coming towards the end, and you need to make the most of it. Or it was a bit of everything. A mixture of I didn't play much that year. Yeah, coming to the end of the career, wanna see if I could kind of push myself to get to get back in the team in, in the years coming. And yeah, just to basically just giving it a go and seeing how far I could get. And then because um because I didn't play that much games that year. So I weren't really tired in the off season. So rather than just having a rest, I could train a little bit more. And yes, yeah, so I just trained throughout the summer and then come back. I was kind of not ahead of everybody, but kind of a better level than what I normally would be. So yeah, just basically hit the ground running fitness wise. I, I was looking around for which youth team players you'd kind of stolen their soul. <laughs> <laughs> um, like the old space jam. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> not current squad, because obviously we got, got quite a... a well, you mentioned the strong dressing room. Um, I've, I've seen, as I said to Nikki, some of the comments on Twitter. So I can only imagine goes on what goes on behind closed doors, what you say to each other. Um, yeah. But is there any player who has been with us in that in that time that you would love to see back at Sutton again? Is there anyone that you think would just love to be playing, linking up with them again? Tough one. There's been quite a few players <laughs> throughout the throughout the years. Obviously, you got players like Deacon, who just left. Well, season before. Jason Brown and Goal was a decent goalkeeper. I did like him as well. Who else is there? Leeway Griffin. Yeah. There's a few. There's a few I could be here all day. <laughs> could be there all day yeah. um, <laughs> these aren't picking favourites, just just random picking people. Random, and random Stefan? Pick. Not not Stefan? Uh, yeah, Stefan, yeah. obviously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'd love to have him back, to be fair. Yeah, um, came back for a little while and then left us again. Yeah, come in, go back out. <laughs> yeah. On the similar vein, which defenders have you actually hated or really enjoyed battling with because you do battle with them <laughs> or playing against you don't know you don't really I remember any <laughs> I've done well against most of them <laughs> <laughs> is there anyone you've kind of walked into the bar afterwards and you just thought damn we had a fight there that was a good one and sat and had a drink with them <laughs> um, there's a few um, I think Coffee was like that when he was at Dorchester alright yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, who else is there I can't really think of many, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> Play safe with coffee. Not, uh, what, about yeah. down, what about Simon Downer in training? In training? <laughs> yeah, we're normally on the same team together. Oh, so, you make sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, don't, we don't go up against each other that much. Yeah. <laughs> Especially not, not from the 75th minute onwards, because I, I, I watch him with my fingers <laughs> over my eyes thinking, oh, yellow card coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. When he's tired, that's the best time to go against him. Yeah, but yeah absolutely. On the same team. <laughs> absolutely. So, do you know if there's any plans to have your uh, your lovely mural um, updated, or are you going to get a new one? I don't know. <laughs> Were you told it? Uh, no, I wasn't told nothing about the first one. It was just done. Um, yeah, pleasant surprise. But yeah, um, I might just well leave that one there and get a new one. Get yeah, a new one. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we'll fill, we'll yeah. fill the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have them all over the place. Last season, obviously. It's our second in the conference, and it was your sorry national league. Sorry, I'm about eighty years behind everyone. Um, <laughs> you scored your first goal at that level, didn't you? Was that last season or was the one before? I can't remember now. Uh, yeah, it was last season. It was last season, and then there was a lovely yeah. little spell. You you were our top scorer for a little while, weren't you? But until yeah, I was, uh, well until Tom Murat took me over. Yeah, yeah. Until uh, over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it was the first goal against Tranmere. Um, great, great place to get it. 
But yeah, it was just it was just a yeah, part of the start of the season that I had, and it was kind of really enjoyable playing well. Team was doing well, so yeah, to get my first goal at there as well was was something special. Yeah, and it, it must be mad um, when you you think of and no disrespect to some of the clubs, but if I think of somewhere like Margate where you're getting changed in in porter cabins next to the pitch, and then yeah. suddenly you're playing at like Tranmere, which is a Championship club, really. It's ground. Yeah, it, you must pinch yourself every now and then, thinking this this doesn't this doesn't seem right. <laughs> yeah, especially from where all Sutton came from, innit? From obviously when I yeah. first signed up, and the teams were playing against them, and now yeah. we're playing against Tranmere, Orient, Macclesfield, all those kind of yeah, and this big got, names really. We've got Chesterfield and the the the, the glamour club uh, Salford. Yeah, who are apparently <laughs> spending money quite. <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot of like big clubs to where where we came from. Yeah, absolutely. So, and well, even our, yeah. our changing rooms have got dramatically better like last season, didn't they? Yeah, they're, they're yeah. really nice now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, so I know you're playing, but you do the fitness as well. Yeah, that's still is that that's not full time, is it? That's part time still, is it? Uh, well, yeah, the days we're we're training so Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Yeah. So yeah, so still kind of part time, depending on how far we get and how far we go. Then obviously looking to. And probably maybe add, add a few days um, but for where we are now that's that's just all, all that we need excellent and what um, I know it's only early days and we've played in ridiculous kickoff early it's really hot but how how you're feeling for this season how are you feeling the team's going to do and have you set yourself any personal targets no no personal targets I just see how it goes basically that's all I just work hard and then see how far I can go and for the team we just kind of looking to hit where we hit last season obviously we could consolidate it in the first year and playoffs last year, um, having a chance to win it up until the end. So, kind of looking for kind of same same sort of sort of run, really. Yeah, of course. And and what were your thoughts on that? On that, as we we're running in, from my point of view, I was just bewildered and surreal of even talking about Sutton being in the football league. Did you ever think oh, this isn't going to happen, or did you think no, we've got a good chance here? Yeah, you always you always think you've got a chance. Well, as a sportsman, you do until you don't have a chance. So even up until it was a few points, well, they had their gap, but we, if we won all our games, we could still catch us believing. And then obviously when they have won it, then you just think about the playoffs as the next thing. So you want yeah. to try win the playoffs. And then, yeah, we just wanted to try and get to the final and then see what happened there. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. But yeah, it was, it was one of those things where it was like, yeah, imagine, just imagine something being in the football league, yeah. kind of laugh to yourself, but yeah, you still kind of well, believe I well, wanted to kind of achieve it. Yeah, Josh was uh, my nephew who comes with me. A couple of years ago, sorry, you had your picture taken with him and just before the picture, I mentioned that you were his second favourite player and your fist tightened very greatly. <laughs> he was terrified. Yeah. <laughs> he was terrified at that point. He was like, why did you say that? Um, but he was sitting there saying to me, just think, Sutton could be in FIFA. <laughs> <laughs> that was his thing. He's going, you can play as Sutton in FIFA. And I was like, no, yeah. that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Um, yeah, well, we've got the football manager, football manager. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all, right. We're all over that. <laughs> I'll, I'll wrap up, get, get on with your evening. Um, so the, the new players obviously bedded in quite well. Didn't get much to see of Jonah. Sorry, I forget his name. Um, Jonah, yeah, yeah, Jonah. How's he looked in training? Because he looks like a prospect. Yeah, he's a young lad. Um, tall, strong, quite quick. So yeah, he's got all the attributes you can see that he's at this level. It's just one of those things you have to just keep him fit and try and get him through <laughs> Through games through the games yeah because um, being a youngster he's probably not played as much games as he should yeah, at that, that age so yeah hopefully yeah. we can get him enough games he needs to kick on it's, it's been the, 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 the game management and being tackled by a, a, a bloke rather than kids the same age that's yeah the, exactly, the, exactly yeah. that it's a different game in the National League so yeah. you, you get teams that want to play football but then you get the other teams that just want a, a bit of bite so kind of make the games kind of <laughs> yeah and you've got to do a bit of both you've got, got to earn the right to, to play but on that something we don't see very much is uh, uh, I wasn't there but a little 22 man conversation uh, pre-season friendly yeah <laughs> <laughs> call it handbags they do don't they yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I only used to do Sunday League football but I, I, I do you know what I always enjoyed it. I always thought that made the team come together a little bit more. <laughs> so I used to always pick a side that I knew was nasty and to hope that something happened. So that the... <laughs> yeah, there was um, a little thing. If it doesn't happen near me, if it happens near me, I'll get involved. But if it's the other, other yeah. side, I just see there's a chance to get a rest. So I'll go and have a drink of water. <laughs> <laughs> well, we once had a keeper who ran nearly 80 yards and he was most upset when the fight was over before he got there. And I was like, yeah, you always what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> running all That's rest time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, I hope tomorrow goes well and um, whatever award they're, they're pr- planning is is um, 
in relation to your, your status you you are an absolute club legend i've seen it from various people on on just the conversations on twitter you're in held massive esteem by players who've long gone like i keep seeing retweets of people um craig watkins uh, damien scannell uh, legend legend all that kind of stuff and it's like these guys haven't played with you for years and they still hold you in such respect and one of my mates at work when i sort of was excited that i'm making this call he said oh i know that name why do i know that name and then he was saying oh his mates were talking about the world cup and i don't even know who these mates are and they were saying oh what you should have done is you should have done though that defender I'm like, hey? <laughs> <laughs> so it seems you've made it <laughs> made it as an action <laughs> yeah. to be taken. Um, i'll be having that's in a dictionary yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely we'll get, it, we'll get it started so yeah thank you very much for your time thank you Ple- pleasure to speak to you and um see you on saturday um and hopefully many many times throughout the season and we're looking forward to um 600 or are we not above with 600 we're going straight to 750 is it well oh um, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> all right thank you very very much oh, thank you Thank you once again to Craig. Sorry I was coughing and spluttering in your ear all the whole time. I managed to cut most of it out, but unfortunately there were one or two still in there. Now another little regular feature I'm hoping to start off is going to be some club results. At the moment I've only got the first team, which obviously most of you already know, and some from the academy. So the first team beat Coventry 2-0. They drew with Woking 0-0. Both of those games were in really hot conditions. And then they played Dorking Wanderers the other night and they won 4-0 with the handbags for 22 men. The under-21s academy side, were they beat Farley Rovers 8-0, they beat Alsford Town 5-0, 5-2, sorry, and they beat Tuna Mitchum 3-2. And now for the upcoming fixtures, we've got the first team against Chelsea under-23s today, the 21st. We've got Winchester Town away on the 25th, which is probably going to be a mix, mostly academy side, I think. The reason I think is I think the academy is also playing Lockswood on the same day. Next Saturday, the first team, I've got Norwich, and that's a 12pm kickoff. Um, as I say, the, the academy have got Ellsford today. They've got Locksford on the 25th. They've got the old Palmetarians, which is the Barry Williams Memorial game. And that's on the 28th. Information there is on the fans forum, and it's also on last week's blog post about where that is. And then they've got SCR Colts, Colts on the 31st. I say, hopefully, we'll make this a regular feature. And now I'm fiddling around with um, some music stuff as well. You never know, I might be able to get a theme tune to go with it. And that about wraps it up for this week. Um, good luck to the guys against Chelsea today. Um, hopefully, get a good run out. Hopefully, get a good turnout crowd. Um, the game isn't got any England game clashes on it, unfortunately, I suppose. Um, but it's a good point. Three o'clock kickoff. Get down there, support the boys, and hopefully give Craig a nice big round of applause for his 500 appearance presentation. To play us out today is a band called Leontus. It's called Rhythm and Blues. You can get them on Twitter, which is at Leontus Official. And please enjoy. Take care. Bye bye.